<laughs> bonus video, bonus video, hold on, hold on. There it is, there it is, I got it, I got it right, the Solomon Speed Cross 4, and this is one of those running shoe reviews that just fell through the cracks in 2018, I'm not sure what happened, I've owned this shoe for almost a year now, and I haven't done a full review on the shoe, I've done a couple other videos, they're going to pop out in the next 20 seconds, upper right hand corner, the unboxing, the first impressions, I've done a ton of running in this Solomon Speed Cross 4 in 2018, Whew. And for all of the Solomon fans out there, by the way, did you know in spring 2019, so in about, I think it's March or April, they're releasing the Solomon Speedcross 5. So it's coming, but this is the 4. I'm going to give you my full thoughts and review today. And, and just a quick heads up, just so you know, this is a very aggressive, lug-driven running shoe. And when I say lugs, what am I talking about? It's these, uh, the tread and the grip on the outsole of the shoe here. You can see it right there. So that is that is the hallmark of this Speed Cross 4, in my humble opinion. So let's get a couple more miles in them. And then up here in the mountains, by the way, I'm at Deer Creek outside of Denver, Colorado. It's amazing up here. It's amazing. And then we'll get you the full review. Ugh. And the bonus video, and the bonus video with the Solomon Speed Cross 4. It is in my hands right now, ran in it today. This is the second video publishing today. If you missed the first one, it's all about overtraining, upper right hand corner, and the the challenges as runners that we might have with overtraining. So go check that out if you're interested in getting the discussion going on that topic. But this video is all about this shoe, and let's dive into a few specs about the Solomon Speed Cross 4. First of all, uh, the heel is a 30 millimeter uh, stack height in the back here, and, which is pretty high for, a, for any shoe, really. And then in the toe box, it's 20 millimeter, which gives this shoe a 10 millimeter drop. Pretty aggressive, right? Putting you up on your toes because your heel is gonna be lifted off the ground. And uh, I like it. I like it for the uphill especially. It helps you, it helps relieve a little bit of that torque that you're putting on your Achilles and your heel area um, because it, it's, yeah, it's just, it's, it's like putting a little lift on the back of your foot. Um, so I like it. And with this shoe, I think, oh yeah, 11 and a half ounces, which Solomon, I'm going to call you out right now, calling you out right now. Listen to what Solomon said on their website. The Solomon Speed Cross 4 GTX is more than a running shoe. It's, to, it's an institution for enthusiasts who want lightweight and aggressive grip on technical soft trails. Solomon, I don't quite understand what you're talking about here. Lightweight at 11 and a half ounces? Uh, I would beg to differ. Now, I don't feel like it, it feels too heavy, and I'm not sure that 11 and a half ounces, is that a size 12? Is that a size 10 and a half? I'm not sure what, what size shoe, they didn't list it on their website, but that is definitely not lightweight in my books. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll forgive you for that little um, interpretation of the shoe, Solomon. With respect to the outsole, in, and so what stands out the most about the Solomon Speed Cross 4? It is definitely this rubber outsole. Um, as we've already discussed many times with this shoe, the lugs on the bottom of this guy are just incredible. They're off, they're, they're off the charts, off the chain as I like to say. Meaning, you are not gonna fall. I was running on ice today, and yeah, the ice, you know, it's ice, so you're not gonna get your best grip. But even hard packed snow, I felt completely safe running in this shoe. But perhaps more important, and I know Solomon is kind of making this shoe for softer trails, and in Colorado we have a lot of hard pack trails because we don't get a lot of rain here. In, you know, Europe where Solomon is based, there's a lot of trails over there that are softer based, or I'm thinking like Northern California or uh, definitely the East Coast and the Appalachias, like just softer trails that might have a little more mud, a little more leaf action that breaks down into that, yeah, just a softer pack trail. This shoe is going to do amazing. However, I'm also talking about, I love this shoe for Colorado because of the protection you receive through this rubber outsole. It's basically like a skid plate on the bottom of your foot. You know, you have, you have skid plates on the bottom of a truck or a big, you know, big off-roading Jeep. I don't know if I'd feel very comfortable 
on the trails going over some of those rocks that I'm going over right now on your screen in a Nike Terra Kiger or frankly even a lot of Hoka shoes even though there's like a lot of cushion there um, the, the, the risk of a rock kind of poking through into the bottom of your foot it doesn't feel good I've done it many times and so no issues in the Solomon Speed Cross 4 with pokey rocks on the upper of the Solomon Speed Cross 4 definitely not breathable uh, at all it's designed to get wet it's so you've got a lot of rubber especially through the outer wall here uh, all the way even to, toward the back but especially on, uh, around the toe box so not a breathable shoe at all you're not going to want to wear this in hot hot temperatures that is for sure um, and very durable a little bit of wear and tear I'm noticing by my pinky toe so and listen I've put 250 miles into the shoe on hard hard terrain it's the classic Solomon lacing system on top through the upper. It's the quick lace system. It utilizes durable Kevlar fibers that adjust easily. But again, Solomon, I'm going to have to disagree with you. That This is my biggest complaint about this shoe, more than anything else, uh, is that the lace, and this is, I know it's a small detail, but it's, an, it's very annoying. The shoelaces are very stiff now and maybe I need to wash them or, but you can't really take these these laces out of the shoe, but they're just very stiff and it's hard to lace up the shoe. Uh, so I just wanna point that out and that's my, frankly, that's my biggest complaint about the shoe. So I'm willing to live with it, but um, I would not quite agree with you on the lacing system analysis that I'm finding on your website. The shoe is probably gonna run a half size small. So beware if you've got, you know, you may wanna do a half size up. Just, just warning you on that. I am noticing it's a little, it's a little more snug than most shoes that I own. And uh, or you know maybe you just need to wear a, a thin sock if you want to keep the same size, uh, which might be a good idea if you do plan to run in this shoe at some point in the summertime. And a few more points. Took me about 50 miles to break this shoe in, so it's you know right out of the box. It's not going to feel like it's ready to rock and roll. It did, you know, it is on the stiffer side, more firm side of the running shoe lineup, and that leads into one of the greatest benefits of buying any Solomon, but especially this Solomon, the Speed Cross 4, is the durability. After 250 miles over crazy rocky trails, I think this shoe is just getting started. Now, the price point, brand new, 160 bucks, but I did just find it for $110 on Amazon. Shh, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone. So you can find this at a, at a pretty decent price, bearing in mind that the Speed Cross 5 is coming out in the spring, so you may just wanna wait for that. But I think I will put another 100 miles into this, easy, and bump it up to 350 miles, easily. If I wanted, I could, I could not buy the Speed Cross 5 and just keep riding this guy for, I, w I bet I could get 500 miles out of this shoe. And so, as far as value, you know, p I paid full price up front, 160 bucks, and I mean, we're just, we're just getting started a year into owning the shoe. So that is a huge, huge bonus for Solomon and the Solomon engineers and, the, and just the material choices that they're choosing to make in order to produce a higher quality product. And I appreciate that because yeah, they're more expensive, but you're probably gonna get more life out of it. So I'm gonna give you an overall score for the shoe and then just make one last point. Eight and a half out of 10, eight and a half out of 10, no brainer. That's a great score for my in my books. Um, but uh, Solomon, I'm gonna say your website is like a five out of 10. I think you're, you're doing a little false advertising here. And this is just me being raw and real and transparent with you guys. I, one last slight drawback is the cushion. You're not gonna wanna run, I would not run more than 20 to 25 miles in this shoe, like a big mountain day. I think this is better for let's say 10 to 15 miles in the mountains. The cushion is just not there. It's not a Hoka, it's not an Ultra, it's a, it's more aggressive, uh, and it's it's just a it's a firmer as we are as I already mentioned it's just a firm shoe so just be aware of that as if you're considering this shoe that it's um, if you like a lot of cushion this is not your shoe if you don't necessarily if you like that ground contact feel a little more so this is your shoe like you feel like you're really digging into the ground and that's where that those lugs come in and just this the the drop from heel to toe it just is it's di you're digging in as you're climbing the mountain and the keyword number four for the Solomon Speed Cross 4 and the question of the day for this video 
Do you have any desire to run on rocky trails with a lot of vertical? Like, is that part of your, do you enjoy that? And if not, ha um, have you tried trails before that are rocky and you just didn't like it? So I'm, I'm just trying to gauge where you guys are at with rocky, not just trail running, because there's a difference between trail running and then rocky trail running where I like to use this shoe. All right, that's the second video in the books. Love you guys. I hope you enjoyed and learned a little something about this shoe. Again, it will be coming out the five in the spring. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be I'll be getting a pair. I I, I think it's April. So I'm going to put that on the docket. Um, it's it's the shoe is changing in the spring a little bit in the heel area. Uh, more updates on that later. Seek beauty, work hard, love each other. Again.